so I have decided to divide the SDK push into two video uh, because I've realized that there's some some tutorials that don't show you each and every steps that you need to know about the SDK push remember when you are, when we had tested our SDK push we had made it, it had worked successful but we hadn't gotten the callback URL this callback URL which is hosted on my Nesca software server it's where when each and every successful transaction is triggered if every successful transaction you'll always get a JSON response so for our previous testing we had we hadn't gotten our our we didn't get in our JSON response because we had not received it so this is how you receive your callback data you include here the content type which is application stroke data then you, you introduce this callback response variable then this is where this is what will be created and what will store the JSON data for example for here we have named it as mpesa sdk response dot json then we're going to open the log file then we will store it there so this this information we're going to paste it on our server in this case software server which is here let it load and edit after that paste it here then you're going to save it now we're going to test it one more time let it save itself as we wait so it has saved now let's test the, the request once again let me put my phone here now let's test it okay it is successful now we have gotten the SDK push let me put my Mpesa pin then let's wait let's wait for the message mm. A successful message how oh, here it is successful then you can come here at the main repository then reload there's the message then let's reload here here now this is where we have gotten the successful response now let's edit it now this is what is the callback response that you get from mpesa sdk let's see which sdk dot json now let's save it here or we can name it the same way as we have named it here let's name it like that so that it should not be confusing now this is where you get now uh, in most tutorial even when I was starting when I was starting to learn this data JPI they don't show you on how you can get this data now getting this data is so simple I'll provide the source code here so that you can store it in your database now let's do this here we have this callback in this now what we can do we can write here data then we can decode the JSON this the SDK JSON response let me remove this true then what I'm going to do I want to get the let's say I want to get the um, checkout ID which is this uh, let's check out I can get the merchant let me do this the merchant data here call back let me see if it is this is this is not correct I'm going to do this mm, what we're going to do include SDK body now if you want to get this the old data let's do this we include this and we write body mm, what's this body we include this body body slash then uh, SDK data 
SDK, uh, SDK callback. Then what you can do, you can get the mm, you can get the merchant ID, which is that. Then you can get the callback like that, which is here. You can get the result code. Data callback the result, which is this one body body then you can get the merchant data merchant description the result description then getting the mm, this is called the let's let's say if you want to get the amount this is how you get it now you this is what you're going to do body sdk not merchant data then you're going to do this then that's why you can see here to access the amount you'll have to do this amount then you check the array where it's placed of which you can see this is array 0 1 uh, 2 3 4 now this is array 0 which is index 0 let's say then you can what you can do you can get the value i think this is the value get the value now let's call this the amount now if you want to get the transaction id now let's name this transaction um, no. Um, action ID uh, data callback then merchant value merchant ID data which is this this is array one so you can even if you want to get the number you can come here and this let's now if you want to get the number do this number phone name it as user phone number no it's not in array 2 if it's array 1 0 1 2 3 and 4 yeah now we can place here for now this is the user phone number 4 uh, this is an error here for now you can now let me write this is here you can now you can check if it is successful now check check if the transaction transaction is successful now the only time the only time if the transaction is successful it's when transaction is successful you'll always get the result code here the results called as zero you can come here to the Daraja api then the documentation here documentation then you, you i want to confirm that to confirm if the transaction is successful so you can come request body which is this then the response code you will always get this response code as zero not the response code no the response body you will always get it as zero the result code as zero now you can check it this way if the transaction is successful if the results the result code the result code is zero is equals to zero now you can store this information here on the database now store the transaction details in the database now this is where so you can add this variable into your database you can create here you can include your database connection then here here you can write an insert query where you can store the information i'm not going to show you that process but you can just create an insert 
and transaction let's say a database where you can store this information now i think we have done everything about the sdk push i've shown you on how you can get the uh the callback data on your new which is trigger when you trigger your sdk sdk request now you'll get your transaction json response data in this format which will be sent to your server like for me it has been sent here and it will create a json file which as you have named it here okay, in your json my json file now let's push the new changes in our github repository so that we can update our project uh -huh. it, it add commit now add in add in stk push files now let's do this then git push origin now we'll push the project so that it can be updated now there it is okay when you come here and reload our project our stk file and the callback url file has been uploaded successfully now that's where we are going to stop on our stk push now what we are going to do on our in our next video we're going to talk about the uh, we're going to talk about the query how you're going to query the stk to check if the stk is successful or and so see you in the next video uh see you in the next video